You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. A strong defensive showing leads to an important win on the road. Straight ahead in the Red Zone, Coach Dave Rice helps break down a 14-point win against South Dakota. Plus, we look ahead to two games in Las Vegas this week. And we sit down with the new UNLV head football coach, Tony Sanchez, for an extended one-on-one -on -one interview. The Red Zone is going roadie, South Dakota style, as we dial long distance right now. This is the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Welcome inside the Red Zone, coming to you from the Pentagon in Sioux Falls after UNLV's impressive 75-61 win over South Dakota. Kevin Bollinger alongside UNLV. Running Rebels head coach Dave Rice. Coach, you had to be really happy with the way your team played. I was pleased with our resiliency. We had three big guys with three fouls in the first half. We went small all week long. We talked about how good a three-point shooting team South Dakota is. We held them to two for 17 from three. Uh, we needed to do a little bit better job on the defensive board, so that's something to work on. But they followed the game plan to a tee. Got great contributions from guys who started, from guys who came off the bench, came to South Dakota, and got a very impressive victory. Lots of great stuff to look at. Let's check out the highlights from this big win against the Coyotes. A jam-packed arena and old-school basketball environment in Sioux Falls as the Rebels ran with South Dakota. Rashad Vaughn got the ball rolling with this jumper, followed by Jalon Kendrick using the shooter's touch for an early 4-0 Rebel lead. South Dakota hung tough as they feed Eric Robertson down low for the lay-in. UNLV's defense was solid from the tip. The steal by Cody Doolin starts the break and he gets it back for the hoop and the harm. Then Dwayne Morgan with the difficult basket and the foul. Midway through the first, Vaughn drives and feeds Wood in the lane who throws it down, but the Coyotes wouldn't go away. With Wood, Morgan, and good luck Okonobo all in foul trouble, they go inside again as Robertson gets the and one. The Rebels created some distance late in the first half. Doolin with the steal, and he goes coast to coast for the lay-in. Under five seconds to go, Patrick McCaw picks the pocket, takes a few dribbles, and beats the buzzer with a three. UNLV was fired up as they took an 11-point lead into the locker room, 42-31. The Rebels shut down a good three-point shooting team, playing suffocating defense. On the offensive side, things started to heat up in the second half. McCaw with the pull-up jumper, he followed that with a triple to keep the lead in double digits. Wood with the nice feed to Kendrick for the bucket down low. Then another steal by McCaw. He's all alone for the drop in. That would make it 59-44. Things were clicking as Doolin found Wood for another stop. The Rebels turn it up on both ends of the floor and get the big W on the road, 75-61. Let's start with the defense because wins begin and end with defense. You mentioned the two of 17 in terms of holding South Dakota. That's been kind of a bugaboo with UNLV and some of their, and both their losses this year. What changed in this game against South Dakota? Uh, just a lot of work, a lot of experience in terms of doing it in practice. And we went through the Arizona State games and the Stanford games. We were five and two coming into the South Dakota game and it was a huge emphasis for us and has been since the Arizona State game. And we followed the game plan, did a terrific job in terms of that. But we knew the key to the game was our defensive three-point field goal percentage. We are fourth in the country contesting twos. We got great shot blockers, we contest twos, but we have not been doing a good job on the threes. And tonight we did a fabulous job. How vital was that play at the end of the first half when McCaw got the steal and then went down and hit the three on the other end to make it an 11-point lead instead of eight? Well, I think it epitomizes what Patrick McCaw is all about. Just his versatility, he can do so many different things. We talked about how many different positions he's capable of playing. But not only are they holding for the last shot and he gets a steal, but he has the wherewithal, the awareness to know exactly how much time is on the clock and shoots a one-legged three-point shot that gave us great momentum going into half. And the job was far from over. We knew that with their experience, their three-point shooting, they would try to come out and make a run. 
So at halftime, we talked about just committing to what we were doing. Started good luck the second half with Patrick McCaw. Didn't want to get Chris Wood his fourth foul quickly to start the second half. And I just thought it was a great team victory. This was going to be a tough game. You knew that coming in. Was it convincing enough what you saw on both ends of the floor that you think your team made a statement in Sioux Falls? I think we made tremendous progress. I mean, our schedule is difficult. Uh, our young guys certainly have to grow up. They're new. But it, the schedule has, with the travel and the teams we played has given them opportunity to mature quickly. It's about survival in terms of the teams we've had to play. And it doesn't get any easier moving forward. Yeah, I, I do think we made a statement about our toughness, our togetherness, and our focus. It also made a statement of the fact that there are some things we still desperately need to work on. We need to do a better job on the defensive boards. We need to keep people out of the middle of the lane. But we stayed together and we shared the ball extremely well. We took some quick shots to start the game. We talked about that. We addressed it. And I thought our ball movement playing inside out down the stretch was very, very impressive. And that's why we were able to build the lead and maintain the lead. I, I, was, I was very, very proud of our group. Well, the schedule does not get any easier. We know that. Next week, UNLV has two games, a home game against Portland on Wednesday night, and then they play Utah on the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Up next in the Rev Zone, we're going to preview those games, plus we sit down with assistant coach Ryan Miller to get his thoughts on the running Rebels so far this year. Stay with us. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Welcome back inside the Rev Zone, where we start looking ahead to this week with games against Portland and a Utah team that is also going to be extremely tough to beat. The week begins with a tough test against Portland on Wednesday night at the Thomas and Mac. The Pilots have won early in the season as they get ready for the grind of the West Coast Conference schedule. They're averaging around 70 points a game, getting balanced scoring from throughout their lineup. Portland also has two big men with 6'11 Thomas Vandermars and 6'10 Riley Barker anchoring the middle. This will be another non-conference test. It doesn't get any easier on Saturday night as former Mountain West Bow Utah comes to town for a game at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. The Utes have been ranked in the top 25 and are considered to be a squad that will be competitive in the Pac-12 this season. Utah is a young team loaded with talent at every position that is averaging nearly 80 points a game and is among the best in the country at shooting percentage. They also have a big man, a seven-footer that clogs up the middle. This could turn into a good old-fashioned shootout. Let's start looking a little closer at these games, starting with Portland, and this is a very talented team that has put a scare into a lot of people this year. There's no doubt. Portland's got a good record. They've got an experienced group. They shoot the three extremely well, which is a recurring theme for the teams that we seem to be playing. But uh, great experience for us in South Dakota, and we'll have our hands full, certainly the Thomas Mack on, on Wednesday. And exciting to get back on our home court. Rodeo is in town, and then two days for graduation, and we get to get back in front of our home fans who have been terrific for us. And then on Saturday, things shift just down Tropicana to the MGM Grand Garden Arena, where Utah comes into town. They're ranked in the top 25. They have played extremely well so far this season, and the running Utes cause all kinds of problems for teams. There's no doubt. And, and of course, as a coach, our whole focus is on on Wednesday, but uh, since we won't have another show until next Sunday, Utah's a terrific team. They're nationally ranked. Blair Kristowiak's built a great program there. They've got multiple bigs inside. They've got stretch players on the, on the perimeter who can get out and put the ball on the floor. And just like we need our fans in the Thomas and Mac on Wednesday against Portland, we need fans to get to the MGM on Saturday. It's a great opportunity for us to play against the Utes. Coach Kruger is coming back with Oklahoma, and they're playing Washington. It's a great event. It's the kind of event we need to be in. We're excited to be playing in the MGM. The team did take finals last week, and now they have a break from school for the next few weeks. Is this a chance for you and the coaching staff to kind of dig in with these guys as you get ready for an extremely tough stretch of the schedule? No doubt. And final exams week for the fall semester is always difficult for men's basketball players because they're trying to navigate through final exams and finishing up the semester strong, but also practicing and getting ready for a road trip because we're always out of the building uh, for the rodeo. And so we had a good week of practice, we liked our preparation, but it's always stressful. And I guys, I know we're happy to get a break and uh, continue to get better. 
One of those assistants that's going to be digging in with the team at practices this week is Ryan Miller. He's new to the program, but he is not new to college basketball and has a pedigree inside the basketball game as well. South Dakota is his home state, so he was able to go home this weekend and we had a chance to sit down for a chat. A homecoming for you, a South Dakota boy. Nice to be back. Oh, it's always going to be back in South Dakota, be with friends, family, uh, all the people that supported you growing up and uh, helped you help myself get where I'm at today and uh, being lucky enough being at UNLV. You've had a very successful career. Your brother Mike, obviously a, a longtime NBA career. How much do you guys talk on the phone and, and how much do you talk hoops or do you keep that to the side? No, we talk, we talk every day, two, three times a day. Uh, actually just got off the phone with them. You know, we talk in basketball, uh, college basketball, NBA basketball. You know, basketball was part of our upbringing and it's kind of what defines us a little bit and who we are, uh, family. And basketball is kind of uh, the Miller way and it's been the Miller way and it's, you know, br brings us together for events, it brings us for NBA finals and we've just been been lucky, been blessed as a family and uh, being able to be back home and and uh, share the moments and memories uh, with basketball has been, been, been a big part of our lives. You're well respected in coaching circles in basketball. You probably could have taken a, a number of different jobs. What attracted you to UNLV? Well, the staff, Coach Rice, uh, the system he plays and, and the people he, ha he has around the program, number one, and the history. Uh, as a kid, I was a huge Rebel fan. Uh, being able to work with a guy like Coach Stacy Ogman, who I idolized as a kid, as a player, and you know the historic nature of UNLV basketball, and, and a chance to be at a program where they have a chance to win at a high, high level. Uh, put all those factors together, being in Vegas, uh, an entertainment capital of the world, and uh, the accessibility of the city, and being able to recruit uh, some of the best players in the country, all were very intriguing factors for me to make that decision to go there. You guys have done a great job recruiting. We have a lot of young talent on this team. How do you characterize this team and the progress that they've made here from when they showed up in Las Vegas to where we are now? Well, we're young, that's obvious. And uh, with youth uh, and inexperience, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. Uh, but at, every time we go out and play, those mistakes get less and less and less. And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, limit as many mistakes we can during the game. So by the end of the year, we have a, a team that's not built of freshmen anymore, but of sophomores and juniors, because they've kind of been tested. And that's what games like going to South Dakota are all about, being battle tested, be, being in those environments where it uh, might not be easy to get to. Uh, you might be going against a, uh, a adverse uh, conditions with the crowd and stuff, but being in those situations where we can grow and develop these young men. Chemistry-wise, fans look at how the players are getting together on the floor, but this staff as a whole, this coaching staff, seems to have a really good chemistry. No, we have a great chemistry. Uh, we all believe in the same philosophies basketball-wise. We all, uh, when we're not around basketball, we're all spending time together, which is very important. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great basketball staff. Uh, coach Rice is an awesome uh, head coach, a great guy to work for. Uh, staff is very close. And, and we all have an experience, our experiences. Todd's Coach Simon at the uh, prep level, uh, led one of the top prep schools in the country. Uh, myself being the Mountain West, uh, for five years and having three championships at, with uh, New Mexico can bring in the experience of uh, New Mexico and how to win in the league and then um, obviously Coach Ogman. Uh, there hasn't been a guy done at a higher level than Coach Ogman both as a player and as a coach. So uh, you put all those uh, mixes together and we get a pretty good staff. What does Ryan Miller bring to the table in terms of your coaching staff? Very excited to have Coach Miller on our staff. He's an experienced recruiter. He's great with skill development. He's got great player relationships. He was a good player himself. And uh, he just, he certainly does a great job with Coach Simon and Coach Augman. have one of the best staffs in the country. I think the best staff in the country. And you throw in Coach Good and Rich Hilliard and Craig Workington and Curtis Terry. We've got a terrific thing going on. It's just guys that bond extremely well with our players and just couldn't be happier to have Coach Miller on our staff. Well, we're going to take a break from basketball here next in the Red Zone as we sit down with UNLV's new head football coach, Tony Sanchez. We're going one-on-one -on -one in just two minutes. Stay with us. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Welcome back inside the Red Zone. We're here with new UNLV football coach Tony Sanchez. Coach, congratulations. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here. Take us through the process because uh, it was, I'm sure, one of those things with Gorman still playing when this all began. What was that like for you with so much happening? 
Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, there was the end of the season for Gorman, and, um, you know, the first time I was uh, – Offered the job was the Friday before we left for the state championship game. So um, at that point, uh, I was excited about. It. Obviously, there were some things to work through, um, but they left me alone through the weekend so we could focus on the game. And then the next week, we came back and uh, we really talked about you know contract negotiations and such. And uh, it was an exciting time though. But it was uh, definitely a whirlwind, you know, getting through uh, that last uh, game and with such a great group of kids and such a wonderful community and program. And now I'm excited about moving on to to UNLV and uh, moving this program forward. Now we should note that it's not going to become official until the Board of Regents approve the contract on Tuesday, but you have to hit the ground ru running because the recruiting trail uh, is hot right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, getting a little bit of a late start, but uh, I'm, I'm confident in the staff that we're going to bring in um, and their ability to recruit, and we're already kind of identifying areas we want to go after, and you know, and obviously we've got to do a good job uh, attacking this, uh, our hometown in Las Vegas. So we got to do a good job of getting organized and going out and getting players to add to an already talented roster. You kept and I am sure on UNLV football and you know that there are some some needs especially on the defensive side of the ball when you have a lot of holes to fill what's your philosophy in terms of high school versus JC transfers to try and fill those gaps you know really it's one of those deals and um, during this dead period we're gonna have to go and look at depth charts look at proje projections for the future and kind of see where some of those holes are you know if we need a guy to play right away you know if we, we have time to develop somebody in those spots so we got to organize ourselves as a staff and then address it so you know if, if we need to go get some junior college guys we will and I'm sure we will um, we're definitely gonna go and get high school guys and uh, we got to get a good little mix to, to help us move forward you know this year our seniors are you know they, they've got one year left so we're not going to talk about a, a big four and five year plan with them we're going to come in and talk about how we can help them be successful right now stylistically what can we see on the offensive side of the ball uh, will we see something similar to what you ran at Gorman sometimes that doesn't transfer with the athletes that you have when you come into a college program but what can fans expect to see well one of the biggest things you know I think is the, the guys that have made the leap um, as coordinators from high school to college have been very successful and the reason is is that they're flexible so we're gonna have to look at our roster look at what our strengths and weaknesses are and attack what we do that way so it'll be similar you know we're definitely gonna use multiple formations and personnel sets and uh, you know we want to be a physical football team you know on the offensive side of the ball and you know we want to be really aggressive on defense and you know um, it's one of those deals we just got to be fundamentally sound in all the little things that we do and again bringing some great guys to teach it how important is spring practice now with the guys that are already here to start implementing what you want knowing that you're going to have new guys coming in as well in the summer spring practice is huge because anytime there's a coaching change obviously there's a new offense there's a new defense there's new terminology um, there's going to be a new atmosphere out there you know things are going to be done I'm sure some things will be similar some things will be drastically different so getting the kids acclimated to our style and the way we're going to do things so this spring we've got to do a great job of uh, communicating and teaching you have to hire a coaching staff we know that how do you balance out where you look? You obviously have a lot of ties with, with people at the collegiate level. What are you looking for in your staff? You know, I'm look, we're going to have a good mix of, uh, you know, young and old, um, guys that have a lot of experience, um, guys that have been a part of uh, building programs before. I think that's huge, having people that have experience doing it at the collegiate level. Um, and. and making sure that we're all on the same page at the end of the day you know you've got to be really loyal in this business you got to have guys that have the same belief in um in in what you're trying to present to these kids moving forward so i'm excited about this group of guys i've talked to uh, over the last week it's kind of been a whirlwind um but i've had some great conversations and we're settling in on the staff and i've got to talk to some guys still here at unlv so we're not 100 percent done um, but i'm confident where we're at right now that we'll be able to name a staff in the next week or so through this process, everybody involved with the university has said that the culture needs to change at UNLV football. What changes do you think have to be done in order for a culture change, both short term and long term? You know, short term, leading into the long term, I think we need to go out and we need to grassroot this. We need to go out and get into the community. We've got to, you know, get going recruiting locally. We've got to get people engaged in this program and, and address some physical needs that, uh, you know, for example, facilities that haven't been addressed in a long time. So easier said than done, but we're going to roll our sleeves up and we're going to go ask for help and um, we're going to do that immediately. You know, in long term, it's just, you know, creating a culture in, in, in the off-season weight training program, you know, and, you know, strength and conditioning and building that, that that fighting spirit and you know and again adding an energy to the building and I can't speak to the past you know again I wasn't in those meeting rooms I wasn't in the building but I know that as we move forward we're, we're going to be an exciting energetic group and we'll match the energy of the kids and it's going to be fun. 
Coach, welcome to the Rebel family. Thank you so Good much. Good to have Go you. Tony Sanchez here, the new head football coach at UNLV. We'll be right back to wrap up the Red Zone right after this. We're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. All right, coaches, we wrap up the Rub Zone here. This was an important win, and it was a real gritty road win by this team. How much can this team build on this? A lot. Uh, that's a simple answer, but the more complex answer is we talk about it all the time. We need everyone in our program, from assistant coaches to support staff to players to administrators to fans, to all be part of the process of building an elite basketball program. And wins like tonight, it takes everybody. And I could single out so many different people that contributed to it. Certainly, we have a lot of things to learn and get better, but it was a foundational win. Great to come on the road after final exams week and get a win like this. Very, very happy with the progress we're making, and uh, we'll continue to get better. All right, thank you, Coach. It was a good weekend here in Sioux Falls. Lots of great plays to show you. We hope to see you out of Thomas and Mac on Wednesday night. But let's wrap it up here with the Running Rebels Plays of the Week. Good night from Sioux Falls. Reb Zone Sports Show was presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. <laughs>